Hey, what's up? Sean here with YouTube for Churches, and I'm about to show you my four-step YouTube production workflow, and wow, it'll make a difference when you think about it this way in your videos. Hey, what's up? Sean here, Director of Communications at The Church LV and founder of YouTube for Churches, and today, I just wanna talk about two things. I wanna talk about my four-step video production workflow for YouTube, as well as a new book that's out, Going Social. Now, Terrence Crawford wrote this book, and uh, I actually co-authored this with him in just one chapter. I like to say co-authored, but he did most of it. Just one chapter on YouTube. So we're gonna talk about this and more, but let's go check out on the whiteboard this YouTube production workflow. All right, so here we are at my YouTube workflow process. Now, this is the four stages that I go through when it comes to any kind of content I'm gonna create and put up on YouTube. And this might be stuff you already do, but the important thing is that we get more strategic and intentional about the, the content we're creating and we don't just roll through this stuff accidentally. And last thing before we get started is I'm gonna show you the number one biggest mistake and the section on this process that people are failing at the most. And honestly, it's having a devastating result, uh, devastating effects on the results that people are getting. So stay tuned, you're gonna wanna see that. So here we go. The first stage, is pre-production. That's where the planning comes in. So in pre-production, that's where you make sure your script is written, your shots are planned out. Maybe there's no script. Maybe you just have a few bullet points, but it's where all the planning takes place. You make sure that your batteries are charged and you have all the necessary gear and lighting that you're gonna use. That's pre-production. Then you move on to post uh, to actual production. And in production, now the camera is rolling. Even if you're just shooting on an iPhone, uh, you wrote down some notes that you wanna talk about, now you're recording and production is on. The camera's rolling, you're getting all the footage. And in pre-production, you always wanna make sure that you capture everything because you never wanna get beyond that and be like, oh, we forgot to shoot that one scene or whatever it is. That's the production phase. Then you move into post-production. And in post-production, now you're editing. You capture all your footage. Uh, you're starting to edit the footage. You add titles, et cetera, et cetera. And then the final stage is distribution. And this is where you're gonna upload and put it on YouTube. Now, what's the big deal about this workflow? Well, number one, there's a few strategic things we can do in each of these areas to get a lot better results. And I told you that I was gonna tell you about the biggest area where people fail. And the biggest area that I see people failing is on this area right here, and that is distribution. The reason why is I think that all our creativity goes into planning some great content, a great video, something, goes into shooting it and making it you know, phenomenal. All the tedious hours of editing the video and getting it ready and getting it all titled, and then we're finally done, we upload it to YouTube, and then we go, ah, oh, the work is done. But the key to really succeed on YouTube and getting the word out about your message, your church, your ministry, is the distribution phase. And that is really, this is where I would say everything begins. I would say that if 50% of your time was spent on the first three, you probably need to spend 50% of your time on just distribution. And what does that mean? It means titling it right, it means getting the right tags, getting the right description, but then it means sharing it. And one of the biggest things that I see uh, happening for people's content is they'll upload a video and you can check it after a week or two weeks and it only has five views or only has 10 views because nobody's really seeing it. And let me ask you a question. If you were to take the video that you uploaded here and you were to send it to everybody on your email list, even if that was 50 or 100 people, then let's say you posted it on Facebook. Then let's say you sent out a tweet about that video. Do you think you could get more than 10 or 20 views? Absolutely, because now you're actually distributing it. It's taking the time to share it. The reality is, is that people are not gonna find your content just by accident. They're not out there searching for it, so you've gotta get it to them. So the distribution phase is key. So on distribution, hit Facebook, share it on Twitter, hit, send it out to your email list, and don't just do it once. You might need to share it repeatedly. If you have an event, you have a conference, continue to share it in distribution phase. So probably the most helpful thing you can consider when considering your YouTube workflow is if you work backwards from where it's gonna end up. And what's that gonna help you with? One of the things that we specifically think about on YouTube is if you ever see somebody in a video say, hey, subscribe, hey, click the like button, hey, leave a comment below. That's something that you almost have to be thinking about at the distribution phase, but needs to find its way almost into the pre-production phase. So when we begin to think holistically in our whole workflow, 
we can start getting better engagement and better results on YouTube because we don't just upload a video that's an advertisement only. We can start thinking about engagement. So in pre-production, you might wanna start thinking about including questions or you might start including calls to action. And so even if you already have pre-created content like a sermon or like a conference video, you could even add another intro and outro that invites people to have a call to action. When you find yourself getting to distribution phase without considering those things first, it's sometimes already too late. But now they can see you talking and saying, hey, if you like this video, leave a comment below, click the like button, and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this to see what's happening at our church or with our ministry. And so you can start planning those things in the pre-production phase and in the production phase to where you're starting to consider content here that's gonna make a bigger impact here. And the same is true for post-production. You might wanna include different titles or you might wanna include uh, different calls to action in, pro, in the post-production phase as well, to where you could put a lower third that has a website, that has something else for them to do, somewhere else for, for them to go. And so, again, thinking about your final product holistically and spending, literally, I like to spend 50% of my time here, trying to get your content out fast, and then 50% of my time here. If you spend all of this, if, if you spent all this energy here, but no one ever sees it, you're not making an impact. But if you start spreading your time out, that doesn't mean compromise the quality here, but get it right, get it planned out with the intentionality of engaging with your audience, and then spend time getting it out there on the social media platforms, email, and ways, and you'll see great results. Now, I told you I was gonna talk a little bit about going social. Going social is a great handbook of social media for church leaders. In fact, it's called A Practical Guide for Social Media for Church Leaders. Ed Setzer endorsed it and he said, you know, digest this book and then engage this, your digital world. So who's this book for? This book is uh, really for those that are still kind of maybe on the fence and you're questioning, how do I get into social media? Or what are some of the dangers? What are some of the drawbacks? It'll answer those questions. If you're looking for practical results of just how do I set different accounts up? How do I get started on Twitter? How do I get you know, going on Facebook? How do I get going on YouTube? It'll help you with that. But even if you're already doing social media and you're already active in it, this book will also help you with some very good sections like, I marked them on here, why church leaders fail with social media. There is six reasons of why church leaders are failing with social media, even for those that are advanced. 10 tips for church bloggers. So really practical stuff that even if you're at the more advanced stage, it'll be phenomenal for you as well. So lastly, check out Going Social, links in the description below. And also check out YouTube for Churches. YouTube for Churches is going to be a comprehensive course coming out in the year uh, 2013, coming out next year. And it's going to help you with all of these things of how to really get your message out, get an impact in first-time visitors and people researching your church, connecting with your church, your ministry, and extending your message really around the world too to reach more people and impact more lives. So you can go to youtubeforchurches.com and sign up there. Check out the book in the description below. And as I said, you know, in pre-production and planning, we were just thinking about distributing Apple into YouTube. If you like this video, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, click the like button, and uh, hit subscribe and subscribe to this channel for more content in media that'll help you go further faster. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.